up guys? Welcome to the channel. My name is Carly and I like to talk about fun and exciting ways to make and invest your money. Today's society puts these shackles on all of us that makes us feel like we are based off of our time. Average American makes about $23.99 an hour. Assuming that you work a 40 hour work week and you've been making $23.99 from the age 25 which is probably unlikely. Till you're 65 years old, so 40 years, America says that your life is priced at the $1,842,432. There is a price on your life, and that is the price that they give you, assuming that you're not investing, and assuming that you stay at this rate from the age of 25 to 40. The average American hourly pay so this is actually a high estimate for your life, assuming you're not a part of the top 5%. This is what I mean by society puts these shackles on us that we are based on our time and not based on our value. So I like to bring to you guys different ways of making money, investing money that are based on your value and what you put out, not based on your time because your time is priceless. Money is going to come and go, but your time will never come back. So utilize the time that you have the way that you want because there are so many different ways to make money. Today what I'm going to be talking about is game consoles. Now, whenever it comes to any market, before you start investing in it and you want to make money off of it, you need to know the ins and outs of this market. So that's why today I don't know a lot about game consoles and I'm not very well versed whenever it comes to video games. But do you know who is? You know who makes money off of video game consoles and flips game consoles? Elise! So I've always been into video games, even when I was a little kid, I remember being on road trips and I had my Game Boy Color and then eventually a Game Boy Advance and then a DS and so on and so forth and you know I always just sat in the car and played it for hours and then when console games started being really popular, you know I got a uh, PS2 and I got a Wii and now um, I have a PS3 and a PS4 and I'm looking to get a PS4 Pro actually. So I've really always been into video games and I think when you like something you tend to want to know a lot about it and so it makes a great opportunity to make some extra money because if you are already interested in something you don't have to do additional research necessarily to start making money on stuff. If uh, you are into cars or you're into watches or you're into gaming consoles, anything really, you know about how much everything is worth. And so if you find something that's priced low, you can buy it and you can turn around and sell it for more than it was worth originally. That is a great point that she made. Whenever you know a lot about something, you start to see it as value. You see resale value. You see the potential for profit. You start to notice different things about it rather than just seeing it in general. So there's obviously a gaming community of people that enjoy playing games or, um, you know, just getting different consoles and, you know, there's a PS4 community, there's an Xbox One community, there's all kinds of different communities, um, even handheld games, you know, people are really passionate about handhelds, and they form communities which share news about new games that are going to be released, new consoles, and they share uh, leaked information, and it becomes a really tight-knit community of people who are all passionate about the same thing. And this community can include people who are just starting out who don't know anything about it. No matter where you're at, you can find a way to make money anywhere, really. So for me, I started looking at um, something called a game emulator. So what that is, is it's a program essentially that can pretend to be a different game console. So an example, um, if you're really into your Game Boy Advance, you remember playing Pokemon all the time as a kid, but now your Game Boy Advance, it's, you know, 15 years old, doesn't work anymore. So, you know, you might be looking for some other way to play Pokemon that you can get now that isn't used or janky and you want something brand new. You can buy something called Team an emulator. Team dogs. <laughs> you can buy something called an emulator which will pretend to be a Game Boy Advance and it can be anything really. And I found a couple different emulators but you know, I really wasn't impressed because obviously it's not an actual Game Boy Advance so it doesn't necessarily work the exact same and some games work better than others. Really the games that you put on there, they may be counterfeit, you know, that's just how it works. That's kind of part of the community. So I was doing a lot of research and I found something called the PS Vita. I do want to make a point and I want to let you guys know that I really like that she said that she watches YouTubers. You're gaining camaraderie. You're, it's kind of re-emphasizing your passion for these things. So it's a really great idea to watch other people that 
one, you wanna be like, or two, that are doing what you like to do or what you want to do. Because it's gonna re-emphasize that passion that you have inside of yourself, and it's also gonna teach you things from their mistakes and their uh, accomplishments that they've made from doing what you wanna do. So you're gaining years of experience in the amount of maybe a 10 or 15 minute video. Yeah, I mean, that's probably where I got most of my information, at least starting out, was YouTube. There's a ton of YouTube videos that make it really easy to figure out what you want from either a console or some type of investing and really it's easy for anybody with any level of interest and any level of education prior to watching the video to understand what's going on. That's pretty much what I did. I was looking for um, a type of emulator because I had a couple and I wasn't super impressed with them. The one thing I really believe is that you shouldn't try to make money off of anything that you don't understand. I don't try to flip you know, Xbox or anything like that because I don't play them and I frankly don't know how much they're worth and what their resale value is. But PlayStations, on the other hand, I've owned a ton in my life. And something that I like to look at is I know generally that the PS4 that I have, it's a one trilobyte, and they go for about $200 used. And that's really consistent across the board. Some go for, you know, 180, some go for 220, but 200 is a benchmark number that I use to figure out if something is worth that amount of money, if it's a good deal, etc. And so I know my console sitting right here, where it is, is worth $200. Now, I've seen a lot of PS4 Pros for sale for similar price ranges. And what that means isn't that a PS4 Pro is worth the same as this console, it's that those people who are selling those consoles don't understand the value of what they're selling. And most of the people who are selling these consoles for undervalued are exactly who you'd expect. Their parents whose kid never used the console or got it taken away, or their older individuals who found this from you know their kid who went away from to college and didn't want it and then they just want to get rid of it they don't care how much it's worth they think it's maybe worth a hundred and then they put it up for 120 to see what they'll get obviously offers like these there's a lot of people who are into game consoles so i'm not the only person you know scoping facebook marketplace offer up or craigslist for these deals so it's really about timing if you see a good deal, you need to be there right away. You need to be the first person who messages. And that's what I try to do. It's kind of how I came upon uh, PS Vita's. I was actually looking into PlayStation and I, I guess I'd heard of these when they first came out, but they frankly didn't sell very well. And um, they were kind of a failure by Sony. And so as a result, I'm, I, at the time, I wasn't very passionate about games as much as I am now. And so I kind of ignored it, but I started looking back into it because I realized they could be used as very powerful and effective emulators. The PS Vita. So here I have two separate models of the PS Vita. These were the two that were made. Um, on this side is the PS Vita 1000, that was the first one. And then this is the PS Vita Slim, or the PS Vita 2000. So the difference between these is not very much. These consoles basically sucked. Not really. They didn't suck, they were actually really amazing consoles, but for whatever reason, when they first came out, people thought they sucked. The reason for this was that Sony marketed these as being able to play AAA games, and what a AAA game is is something you'd think of as like a really popular game, like Call of Duty, Borderlands, um, some of the other really popular franchises that are made by huge game developers for multiple consoles. Now they marketed the PS Vita as being able to play these and basically be a portable PS3. While they are very powerful for a handheld system, they're not nearly as powerful as the PS3 or obviously the PS4 and beyond. So unfortunately, people kind of felt like it was a bait and switch. Um, most of the games that were coming out were indie games or maybe uh, games that were originally made by developers in Asia. And so unfortunately, the market in America for those types of games was not very big at the time. That many indie gamers as compared to now. And <laughs> Pepper's trying to jump in the video. I wanted to come say hi. Oh god. Like I said, these consoles didn't do very well in the United States because they just weren't what people thought they were. However, in Japan, they were very popular and actually there was a whole separate release of different colors and really cool special editions that were for certain games and those did really well. But unfortunately, as a whole, in the whole United States, they only sold about 18 million units, which may sound like a lot, but in comparison, um, the PS4 outsold that in the first couple days of its release. So really, that was not very impressive. And a lot of game developers of these big games, 
decided it was too expensive to make a game for a console that nobody was buying. So essentially, it created this vicious cycle where people were buying this console, wanting bigger games, but those bigger games weren't coming out. And then slowly, people stopped buying the console, so it was even less likely that games were gonna come out. And eventually, it became a little bit of a dead market. I actually wanted to invest in PS Vita, it's not for PS Vita itself, but because it can be used as an emulator. So something that is really cool about PS Vita is that isn't always true of other consoles is that it is really easily hackable. You can basically take one of these, hack it easily within, you know, an hour, and have it totally set up to play any Game Boy, Sega, other types of Nintendo games, I mean anything that you want, you can play on this, and it runs perfectly. These run just like you're playing an original Game Boy. And there are entire YouTubes just dedicated to hacked Vitas and what you can do with them. And that's really how I started figuring out that I wanted one. And I bought one, and I actually bought one that was pre-hacked. I got it off of a, a off the OfferUp, which is a, a reselling website app. And basically, um, I paid $200 for it, which was a decent price. It was a fair price for a hacked Vita. And I thought, you know, for a hacked Vita, $200 was pretty good, and it seems to be about market value right now. A lot of hacked Vitas, depending on the specifications, are going for like $220, $240, and some even up to $400. So basically what that means is I can take this Vita that I bought for $60, I can okay. put a couple hours of work into it, hacking it, and then I can turn around and list this for $180, $200, and have it sold and make a over $100 profit. This took her due diligence and took her passion into figuring out the market for these PS Vitas. And she took that knowledge and she took that passion for it to find the value in these. So she looks at these and she sees the price and she can find things that are undervalued. Just like if you're looking at stocks, you're trying to find stocks that are undervalued, that are underpriced. So you can buy them and you can resell them for their value or sometimes even overvalued. I'm not trying to rip anybody off when I'm gonna sell this for more than I bought it for. It's because I'm putting time and effort into it. So whenever I think of the word hacking, I kind of think of like this evil software developer getting into different systems. When I say hacking these PS Vitas, what I really mean is installing a pre-made hacking software. So that means that somebody who wasn't me figured out a way to hack these Vitas and wrote a program that will actually hack them. And all I have to do is install it correctly and make sure that different settings are changed on the Vita so that it's able to work. So a regular retail Vita can pretty much only play Vita games and there's a decent library but most of them are indie games or games that you can now get free on your phone. An example of that is uh, Think Spelunky and Shovel Knight. Those are two games that you can get on your phone that were originally made as PS Vita games that you had to buy. And so if you have a PS Vita, these games, even though you can get them free on your phone, they still cost 15, 20, sometimes $30 for a PS Vita game. And I have an example of what it looks like. So a PS Vita game is really just a little cartridge and it's nothing too impressive, but they cost a lot of money. Here is a PS Vita game cartridge. This is actually um, The Walking Dead. It's a uh, Telltale game series. You wouldn't think this would be very expensive, but unfortunately, even secondhand, they still cost like $15. Retail price of a Vita that's not hacked can be anywhere from $80 to $300. Another downside to an unhacked Vita is that you actually need a memory card for a Vita, and Sony kind of wet the bed with this one, and they created their own independent type of SD card. So these SD cards only work for PS Vita. They're not regular like SanDisk or Sony SD cards. You can only get them from, from a, the actual PS Vita store. And unfortunately, they're very expensive and they're not very big. The largest size of Vita memory card is 64 gigabytes and a lot of them don't really work that well, frankly. And Unfortunately, they run up to $100 for a memory card, which when you're talking about a console that's no longer made, um, that's a lot. The yeah. console, you, I got this console for $60, but if I wanna get a 16 gig memory card, I'm gonna have to pay another 60, and that's insane. So really, with these memory cards, you can't play that many games. Uh, 16 gigs is actually not a lot. Um, you can put maybe, 
five to ten games depending on the size and even then they might not work they might take a really long time to load and it's just not very playable as it is unhacked so this really doesn't sound by all the numbers that you're telling me, a retail Vita does not sound very appetizing to me. Sounds like a lot of investment for not as exciting games that really you're not going to get a lot out of. And it seems very, um, it's an isolated kind of game console to itself. Uh, you have to buy all sp specific things for this game console. I can see how it didn't do very well. Right. So you saw value in this and you saw a market in it by hacking it. So what do you mean whenever you're hacking it? What kind of benefit are you giving to your customer that is telling the customer, yes, this PS Vita is worth it? So first of all, when I hack a Vita, the best thing about a hacked Vita is that you're not limited to the Sony memory cards. You can actually hack the Vita in such a way that you can use a regular SAN disk and a um, adapter in order to make the storage on this a lot higher. So. I can actually hack it so that you can store up to 256 gigabytes for this console as opposed to 64 being the limit. 256 gigabytes, you can pretty much put like the entire library of games that you might want to play for PS Vita, PS1, PSP, and also Game Boy Advance Sega emulator games. And it's really awesome. And additionally, on its own, I hacked the Vita so that it's able to emulate games like, like Super Mario Brothers 3 or Pokemon, you know, you can play all of those games for free on a hacked Vita and I supply all of the ROMs That's the game files that you need to play those and so really on its own Someone who's really into console games would want to buy a hacked Vita just for that um, One thing that I also do is I install basically a no pay store Which means that you can get any PS Vita game and some PS1 and PSP games for absolutely free I have a couple. I've been playing Lego Star Wars The Force Awakens and it's amazing and I see no difference from the actual game itself bought and, and played correctly. So that's really awesome. You found value in this uh, and an item that's completely undervalued because you saw how easily it could be hacked and honestly the price that you're giving them is totally based on the value and you're actually saving them money by that price. The average person, if you just bought a Vita and you didn't hack it or anything, you'd pay maybe $200 for the unhacked Vita if you wanted one in good condition. You'd have to pay another 100 for a decent memory card if you didn't want one that's used and may not work. You'd probably have to buy at least four to five games and that would run you $150 probably for those games. Plus you're looking at almost like $500 for something that really is not that impressive. So instead of paying about $500, they're paying $200 for 8,000 old retro games, as well as access to an unlimited amount of Vita games. And last time I checked, the library was around 1,800. I typically pay around $80 is probably the average price. I may put um, money-wise, maybe $20 in to do some like cleaning and take care of it if something isn't working. Sometimes the uh, these little analog sticks will not be working correctly and I, I'll fix those and um, fix stuff with the screen, do a little bit of stuff. Mm -hmm. Or there might be something called ghost movement where basically you're not touching anything but your character is moving all over the place and it makes it hard to play a game. <laughs> so I'll fix that and- or maybe uh, it's actually a ghost. Yeah, or maybe it's actually a ghost. So I'll perform an exorcism on the, <laughs> on the console so there's no ghost movement. I'll sell it for about $200. Okay, wow, so that's 100% profit. Yeah, and normally that's because I'm finding stuff that's really undervalued. You know, I'm not buying stuff that's in really bad condition because I don't think that I feel comfortable selling someone something that doesn't really work. I, I find something that's in very good condition that really should have sold to me for 150 but I got it for 60 The knowledge level and any passion level, you really could find a way to make money in games. Uh, I, I just gave that example of the game because you don't have to know anything about hacking or anything about consoles whatsoever to do that. You just have to know, hey, I think this is a pretty cool game. I see it selling for $50 everywhere else and this person's selling it for 20. So I'm gonna pick it up and I'm gonna resell it. That's all we've got for today, guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm brand new to YouTube, so make sure to hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Make sure to hit subscribe and follow me on my journey of making oh, yeah. new content because I'm so excited to bring you guys more and more. And I'm excited to continuously improve my content, learn how this thing works. I'm excited to tell you guys more about different ways to make money. But today, I'm so glad that Elise was here to tell you guys all about the gaming industry and how you can make money in the gaming industry. There's different ways to make money. 
and I hope that you explore different ways to make money, whether that's gaming, whether that's anything else that I've made a video about, whether it's flipping cars. <laughs> There are so many different ways to make money and that you do not have to be based on your time and that you can be based off of the value that you put into the marketplace. You can make more money than the average person, which the average price that you make an hour. The average American makes $23.99 an hour. That's what society tells you that your hour of your life that you will never get back is worth. So explore different ways to make money. I'm so glad that you guys joined us today and Follow us next time. You want to do the honors? Oh, yeah. Peter, where are you playing? Scooby-Doo? Are you playing the PS Vita?